Good morning, friends. So I welcome you all to this uh, online course of aircraft performance. So, as all of you know, the situation we are in. So we will be uh, doing online courses for a couple of weeks. So I request all of you uh, to be regular to this online course uh, for all the subjects. So respective faculties will give you respective timings, and in that time, whether it is Edmodo, Zoom, or YouTube. Uh, you come online, you take the class and do the assignment problems at the end and that's how this online course we have planned. So without wasting much time, so let's begin with the second module, what we have already started. So I will just give a quick uh, revision on what all the things we have finished till now. Okay. So the module starts with the equations of motion that is related to the rate of climb. Uh, both graphical as well as analytical approach. So just like we did in the previous module, in the previous module uh, we derived equations for minimum power required, minimum thrust required and for all this we have seen both graphical as well as analytical approach. So in this we are going to see the equations of motions for rate of climb and for this we are going to see both graphical as well as analytical approach. Then we are going to proceed towards uh, uh, the absolute ceiling and service ceiling. Both are important for both uh, commercial as well as fighter aircraft. Then we will move on to the climb performance and then maximum rate of climb. Uh, various conditions, minimum rate of climb, uh, maximum radius of turn, gliding flight, time to glide. So all the equations we are going to derive. Then uh, we will start with a range during glide and minimum rate of sink and shallowest angle of glide. So this is uh, a gist of second module what it consists of. So let's start with the equations of motions. Uh, let's begin with the climb performance. Uh, as you see we consider an aircraft which is flying at an angle of attack of theta and whose lift is actually perpendicular to the free stream velocity and the thrust is in the direction of free stream velocity and the drag is in the opposite direction of the free stream velocity. The weight always acts perpendicular to the ground. In other words, if the aircraft is flying at an angle of attack of theta, that, does, that means that the weight is inclined at an angle of theta with the lift line. right? So if we resolve the forces parallel and perpendicular to the flight path, we get lift is equal to w cos theta let's call it as equation number one and the second equation we get is thrust is equal to drag plus w sine theta so let's call this as equation number two <coughs> so the velocity component the free stream velocity component v infinity can be resolved into horizontal and vertical component the vertical component of the uh, free stream velocity is nothing but v infinity sine theta it is uh, just a resolution of uh, velocity vector and the horizontal component is nothing but v infinity cos theta but right now we are interested in studying what v infinity sine theta means so that v infinity sine theta is nothing but the rate of climb so what is rate of climb the vertical velocity of the aircraft which is in climbing it may be steady or unsteady steady means the velocity doesn't change with respect to time and unsteady means velocity changes with respect to time that means accelerated flight now this situation uh, can be applied to both steady as well as unsteady accelerated flight right so let's call this as equation number three uh, so roc is uh, the usual uh, reference what we give for rate of climb so now consider the equation number 3 where it says that rate of climb is equal to v infinity sin theta. Now but from equation number 2 we have sin theta is equal to thrust minus drag by uh, weight of the aircraft, the net weight of the aircraft. Now substituting this value of sin theta in equation number 3, uh, I can express the rate of climb in terms of power available and power required right it's a very important step 
uh, in the analysis of rate of climb because uh, the term, the equation which was in velocity, I just converted all the velocity vectors, that means on the RHS, into the power, power terms. So the first term represents the power available and the second term represents the power required. So what is power required and power available? First of all, power available is nothing but thrust into free stream velocity. And the power required is nothing but uh, the power required to overcome the drag the aircraft is experiencing. Right. So let's call this equation as equation number 4. So as you can see, uh, the rate of climb we have expressed in terms of power available and power required. Right. So the difference power available minus power required is nothing but the excess power. Excess power means as you, can, you have seen in the uh, graph power available and power required versus velocity graph uh, always there will be a difference there will be an excess power available uh, that actually aircraft doesn't need but engines are developing engines are capable of developing that much amount of power so this excess power is called as uh, is what represents the rate of climb higher the excess power more will be the rate of climb or in other words if the excess power of an aircraft is more the aircraft can climb much faster so that is the observation from this equation number five so moving on uh, if as you can see the graph here uh, the propeller aircraft and for jet aircraft the power available is almost constant for propeller aircraft right but for jet aircraft as the jet aircraft doesn't directly generate the power, jet aircraft in turn generates directly the thrust. So when you multiply thrust available into the velocity, you get the power available as a linearly increasing curve. So in this case, it is a straight line uh, approximately, right? So the excess power, uh, as you can see from these two graphs, the maximum excess power is available for a propeller aircraft, right? So the reason being the power available at each and every point of velocity is to its maximum. Whereas for jet aircraft, the power available varies. That is because the thrust available for jet aircraft is constant. So as you can see, the excess power is nothing but the difference between power available and power required. So let's say in this case, uh, in the previous module, we have derived the equation for uh, minimum power required condition. So that is nothing but uh, this particular point where uh, the L by D ratio is maximum. So when the aircraft is flying at L by D, let's say for propeller aircraft, when the propeller aircraft is flying at maximum L by D ratio, uh, it is having the maximum power available or in other words the excess power is maximum when l by d max is maximum so higher the excess power more will be the rate of climb so in other words when you compare uh, the jet aircraft and the propeller aircraft of same power output uh, at the same altitude uh, we can observe that the propeller aircraft can climb much faster than a jet aircraft Right? So that is because the excess power available in the propeller aircraft is much much higher than in a jet aircraft. So let's continue with the climb and glide performance analysis. So as you can see we have uh, two approach. One is graphical approach. Uh, you know how to solve this. We did the same uh, methodology. We used the same methodology in the previous case uh, where we derived the equations for minimum power required, minimum thrust required. So all the cases we used a graphical approach. And then the second approach is analytical approach where we use the equations, right? So let's see the graphical approach. Uh, as you can see in the above graph, uh, we have for a uh, propeller aircraft, we have the maximum power available. That is the engine is capable of generating that much amount of power at all velocities. but whether for the given velocity that much power is required, the answer is no. 
that much power is not required we need certain amount of power that that is required to overcome the drag that much is power required so you see the difference is called as uh, excess power and at the extreme point that is at the minimum power required the difference will be maximum uh, that is why we call it as maximum excess power so as we discussed maximum excess power occurs at the point where the lift to drag ratio is maximum so in other words the maximum excess power exists at power required minimum this is for a uh, propeller aircraft right now this corresponds this point corresponds to maximum rate of climb now how to understand this let's say the aircraft is flying at a velocity v infinity at maximum excess power now in that velocity if the aircraft changes its angle of attack it can climb at maximum rate of climb or in other words it can climb at maximum velocity possible right now this is nothing but this we call it as maximum rate of climb now the second graph shows the variation of rate of climb with velocity now this is a very interesting and very important graph uh, in terms if you can uh, analyze these two graphs at lower velocity the rate of climb is low as the velocity increases and reaches a point where rate of climb is maximum or in other words power required is minimum so at that point the rate of climb of an aircraft will be maximum and again as we go towards the right side of the graph the velocity uh, with the increase in velocity the rate of climb decreases see although vectorially velocity is nothing but we have divided the components of velocity vector into horizontal and vertical components uh, as you can recall from the previous discussion but in this case as a uh, our mind tells us that as velocity increases the rate of climb should also increase right rate of climb is nothing but the vertical component of the velocity v infinity sin theta but that is not happening as velocity is increasing rate of climb increases up to certain point and it reaches a maximum value that we call it as r by c max and beyond that velocity the rate of climb keep on decreases so now this is a very peculiar uh, phenomena or you have to remember so rate of climb is although is directly proportional to the velocity up to the maximum rate of climb beyond that point the rate of climb keeps on decreases although velocity is increasing i will end this lecture here so in the next class i will be dealing with something called as hodograph right uh, so please go through it uh, revise go through the uh, lecture once again revise the syllabus and we'll meet in the next class thank you